This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Mad Canadian will be at the OLC Shrine Cafeteria this Thursday, 4 to 7, Cary, Ohio, for some barbecue and bingo. Love me some barbecue and bingo. So, again, this Thursday, 4 to 7, Cary, Ohio, OLC Shrine Cafeteria. Come hungry. Bring your bring your bingo stamp and have some fun here. Uh, check out his social media for some more information about him and his food truck and where he'll be heading to next. Mad Kenny Barbecue Company, who are the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Who? The Iron Bean Coffee Company is a Marine veteran owned company. Uh, they do premium small batch coffee roasting. Uh, all of your coffee is uh, roasted. And if you choose to have it ground, you can buy it whole bean. Also fresh ground after roasting, of course, because that's how you do it. Um, they are based out of Toledo, um, more specifically Perrysburg. Um, all of their beans are fair trade certified. So, you know, you're getting the most morally upstanding beans you can possibly get. And, uh, it's also certified organic, uh, integrity is the core value of what they do. Cause what else would you expect from a Marine veteran Ohio based company? Am I right? Am I right? I'm right. Um, gift cards are available. Cause I know we're coming up on gift card season and, uh, you can also sign up your, maybe your favorite person for subscribe and save service so that you buy them coffee all year round. It's the gift that keeps on giving. Am I right? Am I right? I'm right. So, uh, you can find your new favorite coffee over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. What's going on YouTube? How's it going? Sleep cats in the chat. It's our collegiate chaos episode here. Not as not as chaotic as it could have been. Uh, still, it's, still some good games. Yeah, very, very. This is our lightest chaos week of the year, I do believe. But still, some games to talk about here. So let's. Oh, for let's sure. Go ahead and jump. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well. How are you doing today, Jared? My second favorite team. My second favorite team had a bad week. Was that NC State? No. Team Chaos. Team Chaos had a bad week this week. As team Chaos is my second favorite team. Uh, everyone, I feel like all college football people have a second team. Maybe they grew up in Ohio, but they went to Kent. But like you know, you can be both an Ohio State fan and a and a Kent and a Kent fan, and also throw Ohio or whatever uh, Mac school in there that you want. Like you, you can you can like both, right? My second favorite team is Chaos, uh, but right. it, very very light Chaos week. Um, if we, yeah, I, I Kyle, I think did I drop any in the in the breaking news section of our Discord server? You uh, did not. No, I, I did. Oklahoma, of course. So oh, yeah. low, low quantity, but, but a very high quality chaos loss uh, for 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 uh, for Oklahoma. So mm. uh, Texas A&M loss, which I guess like uh, chaos ish, chaos ish. They already had two yeah. losses ranked out. See, here's the other thing. One of the reasons, Kyle, we have a light chaos week this week is because as the weeks go on teams that actually qualify as a team chaos worthy loss also continue mm -hmm. to shrink. So yeah. that, that also plays into it for sure. Yep. Uh, but before we go into that, Jared, we haven't talked about this in a while. Our sloop cast uh, rankings from our, from our pick em games. Oh, uh, Kyle must've had, a, Kyle's bringing up the sloop picks. He must've had a good week. Uh, I went five for seven. Went five for seven this week. That's a good went week. Five for se you don't week. complain about five for seven. Very good week. Very good week. See, so let's do our do standings real quick here. So, uh, in tied for eighth, we have Cousin J, Jimmy Snacks, and Z Spikes with forty. 
Uh, Buckeye Esquire and Tanner with 41. Jared in fifth with 44. Mm. Uh, mm-hmm. Buckeye mm-hmm. Beat and myself are tied for third with 46. Gangland with 47. And with 48 is Robert Allen. There you go. So th- those are our current sloop pick standings. Those are also starting because we uh, there was a point in time which we had like five people tied for first. But that's starting to thin out a little bit. That's starting to get a little bit, a little bit decided ish. I, I only want to beat Kyle. We, Winning we first would three. be nice, but I only want to beat Kyle. Yeah, we still got three week. We still got three weeks here. Oh, Kyle, exactly. we had a guest. Kyle, real quick, we had a guest picker last week. Nomad, how did yep. he do on his picks last week? He went one for seven. Ouch. Ouch, Nomad. He's not even in the live chat right now, which means we can go after him extra hard. Wow. <laughs> yeah, not not a good week. Not a good week. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Let's let's talk about the Big Ten here. I know you have this crossed off, but I think this is this is important to talk about okay. because of a cer- another certain Ohio team. Indiana losing to Rutgers 38 to 3. Because because of Cincinnati's schedule and who they played and who they beat, that 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 victory that good victory over Indiana not looking all that great anymore now. And they just have the one quality win, which is all they're going to have moving forward. Fair enough. Um... Which which speaking with that with Cincinnati looking okay and pulling out. Pulling out in the in the end, beating South Florida forty five to twenty eight. Cincinnati's just not doing themselves any favors at all. Agreed. So, with with uh, those two being said, Kyle, how do you feel about as I've pulled the tier list up here? How, how are we feeling about the tier list? Um, Cincinnati. Do we keep them? You said, you know, this is another week in which they eventually looked good, but maybe struggle. The, the, the week to week grind is starting to get to them. I think a little bit, mm-hmm. how, how do you, how are you feeling about Cincinnati? Man, South I'm, I'm almost tempted to flip Cincinnati and Alabama. I, I really am. I really am. But let me, let me, I'd probably keep Cincinnati where they're at right now for this week. Yeah. Uh, a lot of big games here and depending on how the teams do and how they play and if they win at, at this point, I think the only, the only direction Cincinnati can go, unless there's losses also in the S tier, Cincinnati can only go downhill from here. By, by the way, Kyle, we're talking, let's talk a little bit of big 10 here, Michigan, Penn state, Michigan won a, a hard fought battle against a, I, one of the most underrated teams in the country in Penn state, in my opinion, um, did, did, did Michigan look great? No, but Penn state's a very good team. Uh, despite their unranked status, I think they're just, they're a very good team playing in a very difficult division. The, I don't know, Kyle, how, how are you feeling about it? If we're going to drop Cincinnati out of the top four, this is another quality win for Michigan. I almost feel like, and I know I'm not going to win in the hearts of any of our of our fans here, but I'm trying to be as unbiased as possible. Michigan has a couple good wins. Should we consider if we if we are going to drop Cincinnati, if we're going to drop Cincinnati? I know you said Bama. What? Yeah, let's let's not let's let's keep Cincinnati where they're at. Okay, all right. All right let's, I just let, wanted to play the bad guy there for a second. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Michigan beat Penn State twenty-one to seventeen. Uh, Franklin going to do Franklin things. Uh, yeah. Uh, we had a funny uh, comment uh, in our in our in our Discord server from uh, Duncan from the Discord. Uh, it was a screenshot of like the the game predictor that ESPN does, where it mm-hmm. tells you like minute by minute what percentage. And it was just like Michigan, 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 Penn State, uh, Michigan, Michigan. Then he just goes, "Have you seen a better pictorial representation 
of James Franklin as an in-game coach. God, like James Franklin does so much right. He really does so much right. I think he's been good for Penn State. Um, but. 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 <laughs> It's he's I, I, so I think, terrible I think, I think in game. Frank, I think he's such a terrible Franklin, in game coach. I think Franklin said it best himself. We're not great. We're good, but we're not great. I think he said we're great, but we're not elite. But okay, well the 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 yeah. Sorry, I shouldn't even <laughs> have corrected you. That was that was that was dickish of me to even correct you on that. But yeah. All right. All right. Moving on to other Big Ten games. Iowa beating Minnesota twenty-seven to twenty-two. Gophers. Go for staying right there with Iowa. Despite all the injuries that Minnesota's had, they're still kind of like Nebraska-esque. They're they're right there with a lot of the games, a lot of their losses, just right there. Just I, I think that injuries is just getting too much for Minnesota here. Yeah, I agree. Um and like that that's just football. And when you're Minnesota, you don't have the talent necessarily to like Ohio State can like miss Garrett Wilson for a game and be fine, you know what I mean? But Minnesota can't, you know they they've played their entire season without their best offensive player. Yeah, Ibrahim got hurt against Ohio State, and that was it. Like, and you know, like I said, if Ohio State loses Henderson, they don't have Mayan Williams. I mean, Ohio State does have Mayan Williams, but Minnesota doesn't. Um, I, I think this has been a very tough year for Minnesota, but um, not not in a disrespectful way. I just feel like it's been a very unlucky season for Minnesota this year. Uh, I don't think this affects our tier list at all. Iowa is still a two loss team. They still belong in our C tier. Uh, but as far as, you know, how things are shaping up in the Big Ten West, this was a very important game. And, you know, what very well could determine Ohio State's last opponent. Iowa getting that win. Uh, Wisconsin got their win. Uh, is it starting to look like a two-team race there, Kyle, in the Big Ten West? It's still really close. I mean, it. there's been a slight separation, but it's still close. I mean, Wisconsin, Iowa, 5-2. and two. Minnesota, Purdue, 4-3. and three. Still very close, but there is that little separation there. Yes. Well, and, and you know, tiebreakers. Yeah. And the other game here of note, uh, Michigan State beating Maryland 40 to 21. Michigan State continues their great season, moving on to nine and one for this for the season, going it in, going into Ohio Stadium next weekend. Man, and Vegas does not like them. Kyle talked about this briefly at the end of our Monday episode. Um as we sit here on a Sunday morning, Ohio State's, would you say, Kyle, 28-point favorites over Michigan 27. State? 27. 27. I'm floored by that number. I'm floored by that number. I might have to pick Michigan State. I'm yeah. floored by that number. I I expected it to be half of that. Yep. So so really, the, the other two teams here, Iowa and Michigan State, keep them where they're at. I don't, I don't see any need to move. Iowa up. I don't see the need to move Sparty up. I think Sparty no. at A, Iowa at C is justified. No, I, I think Iowa's a two loss team. Um so they 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 are where they belong to be. That's uh and Sparty did what they should have done against Maryland. I think they still control their own destiny. I think if they win out, they go to the playoffs. Now, that's a hell of a lot easier said than done, obviously, because you actually have to beat Ohio State. Uh, and then what they play? Do they play Penn State at the or no, they already played Penn State. Who are they played last week? Uh, Sparty plays Wisconsin. Yeah. Nope. Sparty oh. plays Penn State. Oh, it is Penn State. I was right. Um, yeah. So that's two huge games to end the season with. If they win those games, they would go to the Big Ten championship game. If they win that game, I think they make the playoffs. So I think they belong in the A tier for that reason. They don't yep. belong in the S tier because I don't see that happening. <laughs> I just, I, I don't see it happening. Agreed. All right, moving on to <coughs> the rest the rest of the, the conference here, the rest of the country. So going to start with ACC here, Pittsburgh, 
beating North Carolina in overtime, thirty to twenty-three. I still don't like. I still don't like Pitt. Um, I think C is is fine. I think I don't think they should be in the C, but C is fine with me. I think they are potentially Kyle the best team in the ACC. Uh, potentially. I think they're in the conversation. So I just, because to me, that's, there are two lost team who is one of the best teams in their conference well, here, or power five, the thing, I guess, conference. So I think they belong in C for that well, reason. Well, they got two games left. They have who's in second place, Virginia. They play next weekend. So if they win, they win their division there. So uh, to me, they belong there for that. They're potentially a conference champion from a power five with two losses. Yep. I think C is specifically okay. designed for people like Pitt. All right, fine. All right, uh, moving on to SEC country here. Mississippi State beating out Auburn 43 to 34. Kyle, I said this on Twitter. Can we all collectively acknowledge that Auburn is not a rankable team. They'll still be ranked. Please. Can we acknowledge they're, that Auburn? They're, they're going to be ranked 25th. And then, <laughs> and then Mississippi state will be like 23rd, something like that. And Tennessee is going to be ranked now too, right? Cause they scored 17 on Georgia. So let's rank Tennessee. <laughs> sure. Sure. Do you even have Auburn on here? No. No, they got kicked off right. when they lost last week. Okay. All right. Or was it two weeks right. ago? I forget. But yeah, they got right. kicked. They've, they've, Here we go. They were Team Chaos. Off. Here comes Team Chaos. Baylor beating out Oklahoma 27 to 14. While, while Oklahoma benching both of their Heisman favorites at yeah. some point in the game. Yeah. It's it's a disaster. I, I don't know how this is their first loss this year. So, I don't. I don't get it. So Oklahoma now, Jared. Yeah, I mean, this is still their first loss. So, like, maybe we take them from on the left side of A and and move them over to the right side of A. But I still think I they're a potential conference champion with one loss. I, I don't want to drop them yeah. even though they lost. Um, so I'm going to I know I'm kind of got, kind of skipping here a little bit, but Oklahoma State beating out TCU 63 to 7 to 17. That's 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 a statement in, in my mind here. I think I think you gotta start putting Oklahoma State up in the A tier now. They're undefeated. Oh no, they're not undefeated. They do have one loss. They, Who they is lost. it that they lost to? Uh it was they lost to that was Iowa, Iowa State. State. Yeah. They lost to Iowa State. One loss team. I think I think you gotta Potential. put them in the A tier. Everything I just said about Oklahoma and why they deserve to be in the A tier also applies to Oklahoma State. Yeah, I, I think you put Oklahoma State right up there in the A tier. Yeah. I agree. Wake Forest is starting okay. to be very lonely in the B tier. <laughs> yes. So uh, speaking of Wake Forest here, Wake Forest beating North Carolina State 45 to 42. Uh, this was a lot closer. I thought, I thought Wake Forest would have scored or let me, let me rephrase that. I thought I did not think North Carolina State was going to score that many points. Uh, Wake Forest is going to get their points. Credit to the Wolfpack to staying in there, but it's a this is this was a quality win for Wake Forest. I think they still stay in the B tier still. A, a very good offensive team, but definitely a lot of issues defensively here. Yeah, um, I agree. I, I think. I think B tier is is fine for them because everything I said about Pitt also applies to Wake Forest, but yep. Wake Forest has one loss. Pitt has two losses. So that's, I think that's the difference in the tier list. And by the way, like I know Baylor just beat Oklahoma. We still have Baylor and C, but they're, they're a two loss team. That's where, that's where two loss teams go. Um, yeah. Wake, 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 Wake Forest is in the driver's seat right now. They're undefeated in conference. But they do play Clemson next, and if they win, they're 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 in. But as I long don't... as Wake Forest wins at least one of their final two games, they're in. 
We live in a reality in which Clemson is going to get to play spoiler against Wake Forest. <laughs> that, that's the reality that, we live that, in right and now. And that the ACC championship is going to be looking like Pitt and Wake Forest. Yeah. Uh, Kyle, uh, just ceremoniously time to remove the Wolf Pack as they, they pick yep. up their third loss uh, out of C tier and into the, the jumble down below. Uh, before we move on to the other games, I think I think this is a, I think this might be a good spot for us to stop real quick and do an ad break. Cool, cool. You going first or am I going first? Sure, I'll go first. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company I mentioned earlier will be at the, the OSC Shrine Cafeteria. Carry four to seven o'clock for some barbecue and bingo. Let me, let me read some more, some more reviews here, from some people who's had some, uh, Mad Canadian food. Uh, here's one about fish tacos, Jared. Uh, All right. Had someone had the had his fish tacos with street corn, amazing. Their significant other had ribs and brisket, and it was fantastic. Slaw, potato salad were the bomb. Highly recommend to everyone. Uh, got another saying can't can't say enough about their meals. So good. The customers are still talking about how good everything tasted. Highly recommend. Another person saying, um, giving them five stars. Everything is a 10, making barbecue great again. <laughs> uh, be sure to, again, OLC Shrine Cafeteria this Thursday, 4 to 7. Come hungry, bring your bingo stamper, and get, get ready for some barbecue and bingo. Be sure to hit up his uh, social media, Twitter, and Facebook for more information about him and his food truck and where he'll be heading to next. Madikini Barbecue Company, who are the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Uh, I already told you why you should buy from the Iron Bean Coffee Company in the first ad read. Let's talk about some of the coffees. Kyle, let's talk about the Black Roast Fear No Evil. Um, they took their highest quality, most floral Arabica beans and carefully roasted them to the brink of flames. Uh, they are mo this roast is monitored with all five of their senses and has the sheen of polished armor. It smells smoky, exotic, rich, and the taste is bold. Uh, yeah, the the this that's the fear no evil um, single origin um, arabica beans, smooth, never bitter, low in acidity. That that's that's the uh, it's like I said, it's dark beyond dark. It's a black roast. Uh, so let's move on to the drink from the skull of your enemy. Let's talk about that one for a moment. Um, this is an intense, dark roasted Sumatra coffee. Um, our dark roast is more traditionally Indone uh, more traditionally an Indonesian coffee that is edgier and smoker, smokier, uh, accentuating the earthy factor. Uh, this offering is a big, strong, prime example of a classic Indonesia, Indonesian Sumatra coffee. Uh, it's thick, it's creamy, it's chocolatey, but you also find notes, uh, strong notes of cedar and sweet tobacco, uh, also some wine and spice. This is uh, maybe my favorite dark roast of the Iron Bean lineup. Uh, I that I think I think that's probably my case. So uh, you can buy your own drink from the skull of your enemy, or uh, find the your new favorite coffee over at IronBeanCoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. All right, let's get back right into it here, Jared. Um, you hit it at it earlier. Georgia beating Tennessee forty-one to seventeen. Is Georgia slipping on defense here? Letting up 17 to Tennessee. <laughs> or did they just play a competent offense? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I know you were kind of half kidding about Tennessee, but will they jump up after losing? <laughs> was I kidding? Yeah. I mean, I was kidding, but was I? Yeah, you what, are. What's their uh, record, right? What's, what's Tennessee's record now that they've lost to Georgia? Oh, I got to scroll down here. Tennessee... It's five and five. No, I mean, like in all, in all honesty, no, right? Like they can't be. Uh, they still lost by a lot of points, even if they they, they made five, it look interesting for a minute. 
there are five teams in that division that are 500 or worse. Yeah, it's the the Big Ten, excuse me, the SEC East is, it's just Georgia. Like we kind of thought maybe Florida for a moment, yeah. uh, but Florida it's, almost it's, lost to a bad FCS team. We aren't talking yeah. about Michigan losing to Appy State here. We're mm -hmm. talking about a bad FCS team in Samford, and they, yeah. I think they allowed Samford to score 42 points on them in the first half. That entire coaching staff, uh, they've already fired yeah. a couple assistants yeah. off that staff, but they're, they're yeah. all done Not at good. the end of the year. Not good. And then on the West, there's only one team that have a losing record, and that's LSU. Yeah. Yeah. It's it, that the SEC has been like that for, I don't know, for since, since Urban Meyer left Florida, it's been all yep. SEC West. Correct. All right. Oh, uh, so speaking of that. Uh, Ole Miss beating Texas A&M 29-19. to 19. Now, I'm just going to throw this out here. You can take it either way. You can, you can um, think it's a big deal. You don't have to think it's a big deal. But Texas A&M losing now, does that make that loss for Alabama more significant? Yeah, I think so. Um, and by the way, just... Uh, ceremoniously we're removing texas a&m from the yep. tier list that is their third loss they they no longer get to play so, so Ole miss Ole miss now is eight and two for the season yep they're right there with alabama but there's they're not they're not going to be in it unless unless chaos happens <laughs> unless sure. chaos happens but I, I, I don't see that because I'm sure Alabama probably plays some cupcake team. Oh, no, that, that, that's who they played this week. Yeah, they played <laughs> New Mexico State. Yeah, and they play Arkansas and Auburn next. Yeah, which yeah, they, are losable games. Not, not that Arkansas or Auburn are great, but, you know, Auburn, that's, yeah. that's the Iron Bowl. Crazy things happen in that game. And I think Bama yeah. is flawed enough that if, you know, they just don't show up, then, then bad things can happen. Um, I, I do think, like I said, I think they're flawed enough that that's a possibility. Um, yeah, yeah. Alabama, Alabama has that tiebreaker over Ole Miss, so Ole Miss yeah. needs Alabama to lose both of those games. Right, and you know, there's a reason why we keep some two loss teams on the chart, even though the rule is the rule for the playoffs is don't lose twice, right? Don't lose twice, don't lose twice. Yep. But this has been but, a very chaotic season so far. Um, if any season during the playoff era, we could see a two loss team. It would, it could be this year because of the amount of chaos that we have seen so far. Um, it's, it's possible that a two loss team gets in, which is why, like I said, we're keeping some of the yeah. better two loss teams on the chart, even yeah. if they're relegated you, to the C tier. Do you move Ole Miss up though to be No. There are two lost teams. This, this is a this is a quality win from Ole Miss here. So I'm sure. looking at looking looking at their schedule. They have wins against uh, Arkansas and Auburn. Now Texas A and M. Is this should they move should they move up to the B tier? I'm not willing. I'm not. I am not willing to move any two lost teams out of C tier. I'm just. I'm okay. not going to do it. All right. All right, fine. Thought I'd bring that up. All right, Notre Dame, the 28-3 to victory over Virginia. Yeah, Virginia was just never in this game. They never had yep. the offense. Yep, I think keeping Notre Dame still a the one of the one of the better uh, one loss teams. I think I think it can just stay right there in the A tier. No yeah. complaints there. All right, and we have the last one we have here, Oregon. This, this was this was a game a lot of people were pointing to. Uh, beats Washington State thirty eight to twenty four. I did not watch this game, Jared. I don't know if you did. I watched it until I fell asleep, which happened fairly fairly early. Um, the yeah, it was, it was 14, 14 at halftime. Sure was. Uh, Oregon, I, like at the beginning of the game, and one of the reasons why I sort of fell asleep was like Oregon scored 14 points right from the beginning of the game. Um, it looked like Oregon was going to run away with it, but then 
didn't. Washington State, to their credit, hung in there, uh, made a bit of a, at least for, in the context of the first half, made a comeback, ties it up before halftime, and then I, I, I fell asleep. But, <laughs> um, yeah, I did not make it through halftime. The... Yeah, it was a, it was a it was a one score game going into just under six minutes left in the fourth quarter, but then they got back to back touchdowns, and then Washington State got up late touchdowns with nine seconds left to make it look more reasonable. Yep. So um... Oregon, I, I I think you still got to put keep Oregon in the S tier there. Uh, they have they have the best win out of anybody right now. They're they're win they're winning games. I I think you you got to keep them in the S tier. Yeah, it was not a pretty performance against Washington State, who is not very good. Um, is Washington State back? Back to what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. my my only issue with our chart right now, Kyle, is I kind of don't like. I, I feel like we're running out of context for what B is. Um. I just feel like not a lot of teams are qualifying for our idea of B. Should we slide? Maybe, sh maybe should we slide some of the eight? No, that, that, that's why I said maybe Ole Miss to B. I, I was more talking about moving some of the teams out of A. Should we try to limit A to teams who we think could actually realistically win their conference? Because Bama could actually realistically I, I, win their I will, conference. I mean, I will. Michigan you, could actually realistically, I think, because they're, you know, win their conference. I mean, I, I will tell you, like the next next week, like this time next week, Jared. I think we're going to have a lot more B teams. Well, yeah, but <laughs> if if those A teams lose, they they theoretically drop to C. Um, I I don't know. Um, I just I feel like we're losing. I feel like the number of teams that qualify for what we defined B to be are, are running out. Um, but, but all these teams in the A tier, unless you, unless you put Notre Dame down to B, all these teams have a legit shot in winning their conference on, on paper. But like, realistically, like do we realistically expect Michigan state to beat Ohio state and Penn state and, you know what I mean? Like, it just, it doesn't feel realistic to me, especially, you know, we have Vegas coming out and saying that they're 30 point near 30 point dogs to Ohio state. I think Michigan state is a team we should investigate, look about moving down to B tier. No, what do you, what do you, what do you think? Uh, Zach, do you think uh, he, he's a party to see? <laughs> well, that's not <laughs> happening. They have one loss. Um, I Notre Dame does not have a path to win a championship. Yeah. And, and that's why I said maybe Notre Dame can go to B tier. I think, I think we move some of these teams down. Okay. Um, who, who does Michigan play this week? Uh, let's look. Michigan plays Maryland. Yeah, so, I mean, obviously, trying to beat Ohio State will be very, very difficult for them, as it always is. Um, so, I I, I kind of just want to keep them there for now. Um, Bama's in the driver's seat for their division. Oklahoma and Oklahoma State feel like the two teams that are going to represent the, the... Although, maybe not because we have a weird tiebreaker situation, which led to a lot of uh, drama in the big 12 where uh, Baylor was attempting to kick a field, uh, did kick a field goal, but created a bit of a mess by calling a timeout and kicking a field goal in their win over Oklahoma because winning by 10 points or more is some sort of weird tiebreaker rule in the big 12. Um, yeah, I, I I don't know enough about the Big Twelve, like because we're getting down to like third tier tiebreaker rules. So 
I think maybe once we have a little bit better clarity on who's going to represent the Big 12 and the Big 12 championship game, I think maybe we just leave Oklahoma and Oklahoma State where they are for now. Mm-hmm. Um, but if one of those teams is going to the is going to the Big 12 championship game and one of them isn't, then I think the other one should probably get dropped to B tier. But again, I I don't I don't know enough about the chaotic situation that is the Big 12 tie-breaking system, especially since we got people worried about the third tier of it. I just I'm just gonna leave it as is for now. Okay. All right, fair enough. All right, so this is our rankings here for this week. Uh S tier, I don't think we should move anybody around. Georgia, Oregon, looks, Ohio State, Cincinnati. That still I'm looks good correct to me. Yep. Alabama, Michigan, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State at A. Wake Forest, Sparty, Notre Dame at B. And then a few others at C. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, Coast Carolina won their game and UTSA won their game. They're both. Um, are they? I mean, I just don't I just don't see that happening as much as. Some people might want to see it happen. I don't see that happening. Um, OU to B for losing to Baylor? Uh, no, because, again, I think that they... And if, if someone could actually definitively tell me that Oklahoma is now in third place in the in the Big 12, um, Kyle, what what does it say, like on the standings, like maybe on Yahoo or something on big for the big 12. Yeah. Cause if one of those teams is technically in third place based off of tiebreaker rules and all of that, then I'll drop that team. I'll do it. So Baylor Baylor's in third. Okay. So then I'm fine. And Oklahoma and Oklahoma state are one and two. One a and one B. Yeah. Um, Cause they haven't played yet. Correct. Correct. Yep. That's the last, that's the last weekend. So yeah, that's that's fine. That that I think that's that's how that should be then. Yep. Okay. If one of those te- if you told me Oklahoma fell to third, then I yeah, maybe I could maybe I could move yeah. Oklahoma down into B tier, but they haven't, so I'm not. All right. All right, we got a few questions here, Jared. Uh all from Buckeye Zach here. Uh, <laughs> is is Bryce Young overrated? I think a lot like CJ Stroud, he has amazing he has amazing talent around him um so i think that they are both very elevated because of that um they're you know you you wonder what would happen if you you know cherry picked this quarterback or cherry picked that quarterback and then gave them the talent that bryce young has i you, you yeah it you can't really say overrated too he's doing everything that um uh, it's been given to him. He played one half again against New Mexico State, but twenty-one for twenty-three, five touchdowns in this in that game. I wouldn't say overrated. Just well, just has the key. Just has the just has the key to a Ferrari and is yeah. not damaging it. Well, also I like. I don't think he's the best player in college football, but he's also no, like no. first. But he's also according to Vegas like number one in the Heisman odds. But that that does not to that to me just is a reflection of how stupid the the Heisman Trophy has become. Fair enough. That's that that to me is so. If you want to say, well, the Heisman Trophy odds say he's the best player in the country, and he's not, therefore he's overrated. If you want to come at it from that, that's fine. But to me, that just shows you how stupid and flawed the Heisman voting is. Not that Bryce Young's yeah. overrated. Uh, what would Bama done if they didn't poach JMO from the portal? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, he appears to be the best player on their offense at the moment. And a lot of people out there want to be like, oh, Ohio State really screwed up, huh? Ohio State really screwed up by letting JMO get away. Oh, man. And meanwhile, Smith and Jimba. Nine for one thirty nine. Garrett Wilson ten for one twenty six. Chris Olave nine for eighty five this weekend. Ohio State's fine. <laughs> Ohio State's fine. Um, he he. And listen, no disrespect to, to Jamison Williams, but he got to go play somewhere where he's the focal point of the offense, where he yep. would not have been and has never never had been in Columbus. 
Yep. There's exactly. an alternative reality where Chris Olave goes to the NFL and Jameson Williams stays in at Ohio State and things are different, but that's not the reality we live in. So that's fine. That's yep. that's it. I'm happy. Right. I'm happy for Jameson Williams. All right. Another question from Zach. Why does ESPN always disguise how horrible the SEC really is? I think because, um, well, partially money, uh, but also like sometimes people just get super attached to their narrative. So even if the facts change around them, they, they, they're already stuck to their narrative and that's not a ESPN thing. That's not a money thing. That's a human thing. That's just a human thing. Someone has decided that a equals B and maybe a did equal B, but maybe the factors around a and B changed and a no longer equals B, but they're, they've made that equation part of their identity as an analyst, they've made that and, and they just won't budge from it. Yeah. Even as the facts change, pe people sometimes don't say, well, you know, based on the facts that the t I had at the time, I believed that. But now that I have new facts, I believe something different. A shocking number of people aren't willing to, to do that. And yeah. I think when you, when you see people making excuses for the SEC, and what is a down year for them? And like, they'll be back, by the way. Like, this isn't the the beginning of the demise of the SEC. No, far from it. And they're just having a down year. But the fact that so many people aren't willing to acknowledge that is, is sad. It's it's pathetic. Yep. All right, Jared. That's all the questions we have for today's episode. Yeah. Um, let's see. Let's Let's jump back into regular podcast mode and there we are uh yeah uh i want to encourage everyone to come join our discord server we have a lot of fun there um if you're on the discord server or if you just like if you feel like you get a lot of entertainment from this show and if you feel like we bring any sort of joy to your life uh maybe consider joining our patreon um you can join for little as little as three dollars a month and like, if, if you're like me and you're just like, I hate monthly payments, I hate, and even if it's $3 a month, I hate having another monthly payment on a credit card. That's fine. Uh, you can pay for all 12 months up front and you even get a discount in doing so. It ends up after the discount. I think it ends up being like $32. You can help. You can do your part to help fund this podcast and all of the equipment that we need. And like, we put almost all the money back into the podcast. Like we don't, we not, not that we intend to run this as a nonprofit, but it kind of turns out that way. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it is what it is. Like it's, it's just, it helps us buy new equipment and keep the equipment we have up to date and just our time investment and everything else. Um, 32 bucks for an entire year and, and, and we're set like that. That's all we ask from, that's the most we ask from, from any of you is mm -hmm. to jump on our patreon.thesloopcast.com, drop in a credit card and, and give us $32 and that will last us for the year. Even if just a few of you, even if just a small percentage of the people who listen to this podcast do that, that will make a huge difference for us. Like there, there are things Kyle and I still want to improve about this podcast, but like we bought all this computer equipment to, to do the video editing and to sort of up our ability to do this stuff in video on YouTube and all of that. And we're still paying for all of that. Um, but you know, maybe some better cameras or some better this or some better that, and just continue to improve what we do here and to justify the amount of time we spend on it. 32 bucks sets us up for a year. Or like I said, you could just do the $3 a month plan. It would be huge for us. And also, like, for that $3 a month, you get to join Buckeye, Zach, and Stuart, and everyone else down there in that live chat and make fun of us and our chairs while we record. Yes. yes. <laughs> so, I mean, if, if like, the pure, uh, just do it to help us thing doesn't work for you, 
you get to join a bunch of hooligans in our Discord server in like the exclusive part of our Discord server. So that's a lot of fun. So uh, Kyle, that's it. Do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Not really. Just looking at games for this weekend. Um, we got a top 25 matchup of Oregon, Utah, obviously the Michigan State and Ohio State game. Iowa State, Oklahoma can be a good game. We talked about Wake Forest and Clemson can ultimately decide that division there. Uh, Arkansas and Alabama, another 25 matchup. Nebraska, Wisconsin could be a good game uh, this next weekend here. Uh, yeah, get look, looking like we have a good handful of uh, games this week, this weekend here. So looking forward to it. Cool, cool. Uh, that's it for our show. Um, I'm going to do it again, Kyle. I've done this a couple times now. Um, I'm going to do it again now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play Mother Folk again, just to let everyone know they're playing at the basement on Friday. Uh, trying to give you guys plenty of heads up on that. Playing at the basement, which is a venue. It's not, it's, 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 in, it's in the basement of another venue. Uh, it's uh, in the Arena District downtown. Uh, go, go check them out. Uh, the tickets are relatively cheap. It's a relatively small venue, so you're going to get a cool, intimate experience. Um, go check them out. Uh, it's a few bucks. It's a, it's a something to do on a Friday night when it's too cold to do anything outside. So go check them out. Uh, so with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Uh, once again, this is Motherfolk. <laughs>